Hello everyone and welcome to my Salmon Great deck profile. This is more of a control build as I don't own Axis Code Talker due to it being very expensive but you can easily swap it in for one of the Link 4s that I run. The deck is still very much viable without Axis Code. I actually went 5-0 at Locals this week with this build. My matchups were Altergeist, Generator, Phantom Knights, Tri Brigade and Salmon Great. You do want to go first with this deck and when going first your plays are fairly linear and clear and basically the main goal is to survive into the next turn because that's where Salmon Great really starts to shine with its recurrence of resources. Uh, the deck yeah, gets really fun once you go post the first three or four turns. To kick things off I play two copies of Salmon Great Jack Jaguar. So I play it at two to minimize the chances of all the copies being banished by Desires and after turn one this becomes a one card Link 4 so it's a great top deck. It's also serviceable as your first turn normal summon if you have to. I then play the one copy of Falco. So this is good recursion for your spells and traps and can be a good normal summon too if you've discarded a Salmon Great card for Sign It Mining. Its grave effect is nice as well, allows for some nice rank 4 plays with Foul and Jaguar. Note that the card you shuffle back for its grave effect has to go back to the hand to get the summon, so you don't get to return a Sunlight Wolf or a Spinny that was summoned from Grave and will then banish. And lastly for the level 4 Salmon Great Monsters I play the one copy of Foul. So it's a decent extender that can chain block effects like Gazelle and Balinx and it also allows you to do some rank 4 plays with Mirage Stalio and the other level 4s as well. Not at all necessary, it's just personal preference. The second effect is good as well for baiting out back row. Next I play Three copies of Spinny. This is played at three now that Stalio's back as it becomes a great reusable resource. It's another one card link four if you draw it after turn one and have any other main deck Cybers monster in your grave. His attack boost effect does come up as well as you can use it on a Jack Jaguar to get over a Shadal window. I then play two copies of Foxy. This can be played at three as well but I personally like it at two. It can be really nice plus um, when you normal summon it, but its best effect is its grave effect for special summoning back and then destroying a face of spell trap card. It's level 3 as well, so it can help you go into Mirage Stalio. When going first in games 2 and 3, you really want to avoid using the summon effect if possible, as your opponent will have likely sided in Nibiru, maybe even a Gamma as well, which means you want to be able to use Foxy's grave effect if necessary to get the summon back on and to make your spells and traps live. But again, it does depend on your hand. Lastly, for the Salmon Great Monsters, I play the one copy of Gazelle. It's basically a free summon in this deck and is a foolish burial for any Salmon Great card. It can be a bit of a choke point, which is again why I like Buffalo for drawing into more traps and hand traps. Don't forget that the summon effect triggers if you ditch something like a Salmon Great Monster to search Gazelle with Sign It Mining, so free summon there. For the non Salmon Great Monsters, I play three copies of Buffalo. This is the best normal summon in the deck. If you open this with a Spinny, a Jaguar, an Archiver or a Falco, you're going to go at least plus two. You can chain block it as well if you use the Balinx effect, which is what you will do 99% of the time. It also works well with Splash Mage when link climbing, as you'll get the draw two effect again, provided you didn't use it earlier in the turn. I do prefer it to debug for the fact that debug is basically a hand trap magnet and you can go second pretty well with Buffalo as well to draw into some of your sided cards so it's just really good for going first for drawing the extra cards like hand traps and traps and going second great for drawing your sided blowout cards lastly for the cybers monsters i play just the one copy of sea archiver it's a great extender for link climbing or for going to mirage stalio if you use it with mirage stalio it doesn't get banished as well so it's a free resource to turn after or in your opponent's turn as well next i'll go through the hand traps that i play I play three copies of Ash Blossom. So you should always play Ash Blossom at three in this deck because you can recur it with Sunlight Wolf and you will win 99% of the games that you do manage to recur this as it's just such a great resource in a simplified game state. I then play two copies of Ghost Bell. This is a pretty good generic hand trap as well. It's useful against Tri Brigade, Call by the Grave, anything that wants to manipulate the Grave basically or Banish from the Grave. It's both a defensive and offensive hand trap in this deck, which is really nice. I then play 
two copies of Ghost Ogre. This has less utility than the first two, but it still comes up. I also run three copies of Effect Veiler. I would probably swap this for Infinite Impermanence if I had it, as it plays around Triple Tactics Talents and Call by the Grave as well. You can also use it on your opponent's turn, but Veiler's still a very good interruption. And lastly for the Hand Traps, I play two copies of DD Crow. It's another decent hand trap, and all of these except Ash really can be swapped in for other ones if you prefer it, or depending on what your locals are like. My reasoning for this hand trap lineup is that I don't want to open multiples of the same hand trap, as I need to disrupt my opponent as much as possible if I'm going second, for example, and obviously the exception here is Ash. So that's why I run two Bell and two Ogre, because I don't want to open two of them, uh, and the Effect Veiler and DD Crow aren't once per turn, so I don't mind opening multiples of them. I'm also running 12 hand traps altogether, which allows me to go second without too much trouble if I open OK. Running hand traps instead of traps is advantageous in this deck going into games 2 and 3 as well, as your opponent will have sided in back row removal probably, and this just allows you then to interrupt even if you do lose your back row. Next for the spell cards, I play 3 copies of Silent Mining. This searches you any Cybers monster in the deck, and it usually isn't really an egg one because your salmon great monsters have graveyard effects. I then play Pot of Desires. You play this last on your turn if going first, that way you banish a gazelle or something important, you weren't going to see it anyway. It provides free advantage to the deck and once you have your grave set up it doesn't really matter what you banish as well. And lastly it just helps beef up uh, Zeroboros. I play Two, Will of the Salon Grape. I think two is pretty optimum. Three is okay as well, but I don't want to brick on it. If you can, you hold this on turn one, just in case they have Nibiru. But if you do set this up post turn one, you get a free summon every turn, which just wins you so many games and allows you to recur so much. Then play one copy of Circle and one copy of Sanctuary. Circle serves you any salad monster, and its second effect would come up a lot more if it was still at three. But again, if I'm going to go first in games 2 or 3 and I open this plus a really, really good hand, I may sometimes hold this for the second effect in case they try and abuse me. And then Sanctuary is the one card you don't open, as it means you can't chain block Buffalo or get free advantage with Bailinx. It's a bit of a brick, but it's not a Garnet, so it's not terrible if you open it, it's just not great. And now for the traps. I play two copies of Roar and... Two copies of Rage. My reasoning behind this is I play them both at two to increase my chances of op opening at least one. I will usually side out one Rage when going first in games two or three, as that way I don't have to play into Nibiru, because Rage's best effect is when you have a reeling monster. And lastly, for the main deck, I just played the one copy of Imperial Order. It's played because it just wins games by itself and doesn't really harm this deck once you've got your setup done. Now for the extra deck, I run three copies of Bailinx and three copies of Wolf. So Bailinx, you need to play at three and Wolf as well. Bailinx such as you the field spell and can protect any face-up salad card from destruction, multiple if necessary. It also starts your plays mid to late game, as you can then special summon, say, Jack Jaguar or a spinning from the grave. Sunlight Wolf, this card is what makes the deck work basically. It offers so much recursion to the deck and it's what allows you to win most grind games as well. And then I also play two copies of Heat Leo. This is a great monster to have in a more control orientated Salmon Great deck as it can really mess with your opponent's back row, especially if the game state is quite simplified and you're going into turn two, three, four, and five when there's less kind of recursion from other decks. For the non-salad Link Monsters, I play the one copy of Update Jammer and the one copy of Splash Mage. So Jammer just allows you to OTK basically, as it allows one of your monsters up summon with it to attack twice. This can work on any monster by the way, if you want to add a non cybers monster in here. And Splash Mage special summons a Cybers from the Grave in Defense. It's really good for Link Climbing, and again it's even better if you summon a Flame Buffalo with it. Then I play one Transcode Talker, one Zeroboros, and one Avramax. 
So Transcode Talker is used to link climb into a link 4, but it can also OTK with Update Jammer. Sometimes I'll make this going first with a wolf underneath it if I'm playing against, for example, Sky Strikers or Altergeist, as a lot of their effects target. Zeroboros can get really powerful in this deck and is just a great card in a simplified game state, but it's just mainly used as an OTK tool. Jack Jaguar and Spinny are both one card Zeroboros is under the right circumstances. And lastly, there's Avramax. This should 100% be an Axis Code Talker. As I said, I don't have one, um, but Avramax is still an okay replacement. Uh, I like it in the deck because if you can't OTK and you can't really recur that many resources, you can just sit on the Avramax so that your opponent has to put a lot in to get rid of it, and then you can also maybe shuffle back one of their cards. Um, it also offers nice protection to some of your weaker Salmon Great Monsters like Bailinx because your opponent can't attack into them. Then for the Xyz Monsters, I play one copy of Mirage Stalio and one copy of Abyss Dweller. Stalio special summons any Salmon Great Monster from the deck, uh, so it's very good if you do summon this, although it does lock into fire effects for the rest of the turn, but it doesn't really matter in this build because it is more control focused. It also provides non-destruction removal as well, which is what the deck was previously missing, so it's a really nice addition to have. And then Dweller is just a really good rank 4. It's really good this format against decks like Tri Brigade or Drytron. It just shuts off so many decks, including Salmon Great as well. I'll just quickly as well go into the side deck that I used at Locals. I run, or I ran, three copies of Nibiru and three copies of Lancia. These are just relevant hand traps for my Locals. Nibiru is just generically very good and Lancia is good because it, I've got a lot of um, Tri Brigade and Phantom Knights at my Locals. I run the one Prohibit Snake in case I come up against Dogmatic I should all invoke or some builds that maybe run Dragoon as well. It's also worth noting that the Recursion Prohibit Snake gives you is really really good too so it's definitely on theme with Salmon Greats. I play three Dark Ruler No More for combo decks. I don't need to OTK with the deck. If I can negate all of my opponent's monsters, set up my board, I'm going to win anyway. So the downside is not really a downside. For back row, I play three Cosmic Cyclone, one Harpy's Feather Duster, and the last card is one Red Reboot. So that rounds up the deck. I will do a short combo video for this deck profile as well in the coming days. Um, it's just worth noting that there's not really many combo lines with Salmon Great that are set in stone. It just depends on what you open. But I will show some of the interactions and a few of the rulings as well that are quite useful to know. So thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you guys in the next one.